Hi everyone and welcome back to another Mikey Two Hands video. Today we'll be showing you how to put together an e-bike that I made using a kit that I bought online. This is a Voilomart 1000 watt 48 volt kit that I bought on eBay and I'll show you the links to the different parts I use for this project below. As well as how to put together this nifty cut off sensor switch that cuts off the motor as soon as you pull the brake levers. So stick with me and I'll show you step by step how I put it together. Cheers! Okay, so this is the Voila Mart 48 volt 1000 watt kit that I bought on eBay. And I ended up getting this kit for less than $200 after they took $10 off uh, through a promotion. So $200 for that kit. And uh, this is the bike that I'm putting it on. Have a look at my other video on how to paint an aluminium frame. This is my Cannondale bad boy from 2003 with 26 inch wheels. Uh, next thing you're going to need is a battery. So you're going to need a battery that matches your kit. So a 48 volt battery. I just got the 10 amp hour battery and that ended up costing me about $250 after I uh, got a discount from eBay as well. Okay, so these are some of the things that come in the kit. You get a bike tube and a bike tyre. Now this tyre is pretty ordinary, it's uh, pretty cheap and it's, uh, I just ended up throwing it away and using the Maxxis DTH tyres that uh, came with my Cannondale. Uh, next is the Voila Mart uh, bag that comes with the uh, kit. So you can put your controller in here as well as any excess cable and just strap that to your frame like so. But it tends to flap around a little bit so I ended up uh, connecting my control box directly to the frame and I'll show you how to do that shortly. Uh, this control box is waterproof, it's got plastic gaskets around each end so no water can get in. Uh, next you've got a gear cassette uh, for the back wheel as well as a spacer that comes with that. Uh, what do we got next? A, uh, the, the instructions, chuck those away, you won't need that. Uh, next thing is the throttle. So it's a full length throttle that uh, goes the whole length of the handlebar. I find it a bit dangerous to have a full length throttle. I just like to be able to control the throttle with my first two fingers. So I'll show you how we cut that down and, uh, and put my own handbar grips on. Next are the brake levers. Now as you can see these are massive. I can't understand why they've given you such huge uh, brake levers. If you compare it next to my Cannondale brake levers they're almost twice the length so we're not going to use those. Uh, the reason they give you these brake levers is because it's got a cut off switch uh, cabled into it. Um, but I'll show you how we're going to work around that. And lastly in the box uh, you've got your pedal assist uh, wiring and I'm not going to use that either because I just want to use this e-bike on a throttle. Uh, you also got some cable ties and other bits and pieces in there. And now for the additional bits and pieces I've added. Uh, I've bought this uh, control box case uh, from eBay as well. Uh, it cost about $16. Uh, and I'm just going to use the back of that with the curved bit to attach my uh, controller to the frame. Uh, next I've got a chain tensioner because I'm just going to uh, take off the rear derailleur and use it as a single speed. And this is a cut off sensor switch. Also I got this from eBay for about $16 and I'll show you how to attach that shortly. And this is a torque arm. It costs about $15 once again from eBay and that's just going to stop the rear wheel spinning it out of the frame if it takes off quickly and it comes with a couple of clamps to attach that. And lastly, you're just going to need a set of cable pliers and connectors like this, uh, just because we're going to shorten up a few of the cables, and also to connect the battery cable to the controller, because they very rarely come with the same plug. Okay, so step number one is putting the uh, the tyre on. So the kit comes with a uh, some rim tape, uh, that'll just protect your tube against the spokes. Uh, it comes with the tube and also that tyre if you want to use the one that comes with it. Uh, in this uh, uh, case I'm going to use the tyres that are on my um, Cannondale, which is some Maxxis DTH uh, tan wall uh, side tyres. Um, next you're going to need to put on the gear cassette that comes with it, so just unscrewing those bolts there. Uh, screw on the, um, the gear cassette and uh, just finger tight is all you need to do to, uh, to tighten that on there. You don't need any special tools. Once that's on, put the uh, washers back on again and uh, you can fit that straight onto your frame. Okay, next we're going to paint the controller box. As you see, it comes with a shiny silver aluminium uh, controller box, but because I've got a black frame bike, I'm just going to paint that black as well. So just covering up those cables to protect them and taping that uh, bag over the cables, I'm just going to firstly use an etch primer uh, for aluminium, 
and then I'm going to cover that once it's dry with a satin black uh, enamel and I'm also going to paint that torque arm as well. So next we're going to fit the chain tensioner. Uh, now this should fit uh, straight onto the bracket that your rear derailleur came uh, off and that'll just keep the chain uh, nice and tight and stop it uh, moving around. Now the reason I'm uh, replacing the de rear derailleur with the chain tensioner is because I find that once you've got an e-bike you don't need the gears anymore. If the going gets tough you just give it a bit more throttle, you don't need to change any gears. So I just set that into uh, one of the uh, lower gears and I'm just going to use it as a single speed uh, from this point forward and just use the throttle if I need extra oomph. So just line that up uh, with the, the cog that you've decided to put it on and you're ready to go. Next we're going to fit the torque arm. As I mentioned before, uh, the torque arm just goes onto uh, the rear wheel and connects to the frame and it stops the, uh, the rear axle of the e-bike spinning around uh, and sp potentially spinning out of the frame and loosening your nut uh, on the back wheel. Uh, as you uh, accelerate, you're putting torque onto that connection uh, on the um, rear of the frame which is only held on by that uh, rear bolt. By putting that torque arm on, it just locks that frame onto the front, locks the axle onto the frame, and stops it spinning and potentially undoing that uh, that rear nut. And that just uh, being held onto place uh, by a clamp that you can tighten up onto the frame there as well. So once you've got the torque arm into place and loosely done up the uh, the rear axle uh, nut, uh, tighten up your clamp bolt uh, so that uh, torque arm is nice and tight to the frame. And then lastly you can use your wrench and really tighten up that, uh, that rear axle bolt. So now we're going to cut uh, this throttle down to size. As you can see, it comes a full length throttle. I just want to be able to control it with my first two fingers so I can control the rest of the handlebar with the remainder of my hand. So I'm just going to cut it there uh, with a hacksaw just down to size so I uh, don't have the full length. And once you've got that cut through, you can just use a bit of sandpaper or a, um, a file just to smooth off the cut uh, so it's no, no jaggedy edges on that. So go ahead and fit that to your handlebar in the position that you need and um, once you've got that fitted then you'll see how much remaining handlebar you've got left for your uh, lock on grip. So I'll just cut that down to size as well and attach that and now I've got a full length handlebar that I can mainly control with my hand but then I can just use my first couple of fingers to control the throttle. Next we're going to fit the battery. Uh, so where your drink holder holes come out, you'll have two of the holes. This actually uh, connection has three connection holes. So I actually used a drill and drilled a third hole in so I could have all three connection holes and have that battery securely attached to the frame. So once you've got the, uh, the bracket installed, the battery just slips on and you can use a key to lock that into position. Now as you can see, the cable that comes with it is quite long. I only need to uh, a sh relatively short run back to the control panel, so I'm going to cut that down to size. So now we're going to do the, uh, the fitting of the brake cutoff switch. Uh, so with the battery keys that came with uh, my battery, I had this little metal tag. So we're going to use this as part of our cutoff switch, which I'll show you how to use in a minute. If you don't have this little tag, you may have to find another little bit of metal to use to uh, complete this bit. Uh, so attaching uh, my brake cutoff sensor switch that I got on eBay, I've just attached that uh, quite closely to the brake cable on my tube. Now all bikes are going to be different, uh, but if you've got one of these connections for your brake cable, then you're going to be able to do this trick as well. Uh, so just bending that key tag in um, half, or almost in half, um, we're going to be able to attach that to the, uh, the brake cable. So firstly, i uh, just going to loosen off that cable by disconnecting my V-brakes and pulling that cable through. I've just marked on the cable where I need to attach it. And just using my uh, cable uh, pliers, I'm just going to crimp that onto that uh, cable like so uh, in the position. So just uh, squeeze that bit of metal around the cable, squeeze, squeeze, and that's attached that on pretty tightly so it doesn't move. So each time I pull my brake cable, that's going to move that uh, tag up and down the frame. Uh, so we just need to reattach those uh, brakes now to put them back into position and that little circle uh, that I've attached there is actually a magnet. So uh, each time I pull the brake uh, cable it's going to remove that magnet from the sensor and that's going to cut off the sensor switch inside uh, the control box. So each time I pull the brake it's going to disconnect the, uh, the motor and stop it running at the same time I've got the brakes on. Now that cable that came with the, uh, the cutoff switch was quite long so I've just cut that down, reattached those cables and uh, put some tape around there again. Now luckily it comes with the exact same plug that you're going to need for the Voila Mart 
uh, brake cable cutoff switch. So that plugs straight into the uh, into the control box there. And there you have it, cutoff brake sensor switch. Next, you're going to uh, need to fit that control box. So as you can see, it's nice and black now after I've finished painting it and that paint's dried. But how am I going to connect it to my frame? Uh, so using that uh, controller box case I showed you in the earlier part, I'm just going to connect that control box, the, or the back end of that uh, the control box, to my uh, controller like so. Now those uh, screw holes don't line up exactly, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it to the bottom like so through those connections, but where it doesn't match at the top, I'm just going to take the screws off that, flip it around, and point that bit of uh, that connection bit downwards, and I'll show you in just a second how I do that. So unscrewing uh, that uh, top part of the control box, I've just turned it, flipped it around upside down, and uh, also painted that black as well. So that's the way it was on, and uh, once I've connected that with a couple of screws, I'm going to reattach that back onto the control box, just giving you a look inside there to show you how uh, the control box looks inside. And that comes with that little rubber gasket. So once I screw that uh, top part back on again, it'll be nice and waterproof and uh, I'll be able to ride that in any sorts of uh, weather and it won't get water inside the control box and cause any problems. So I'm just going to screw that back in like so. And there you can see it all nicely screwed on and uh, those bolt holes now match up. Now just before I attach that uh, back to the frame of the bike, I'm just going to use some uh, glue and I'm just going to put a couple of daubs of glue into the uh, those bolt holes that I've used uh, to connect uh, the controller case to the controller box and that'll just stop those, uh, those nuts from loosening up um, and wriggling uh, free. And next I'm just going to use a spare bit of old uh, bike tube that I had just to, uh, to put that between the uh, control box and the frame uh, to help stop scratching my frame and also just to stop it uh, any vibrations uh, wriggling that loose. Okay, next we're going to shorten up some of the uh, the cables. This is the uh, the cable connector that comes with the battery. I think it's called an Anderson uh, connection. Uh, but most of the uh, kits that you have will just have a um, the battery will have a couple of connectors like this which uh, don't match up. So we need to shorten that uh, battery cable anyway. Uh, so always make sure you've got your battery turned off at the switch uh, before you cut any cables on the battery. And we're just going to use some a couple of the connectors that came with uh, my cable ply kit and uh, use a male and female connector uh, just to connect that uh, battery. So now we've cut it off to the, uh, the appropriate length and I'm just going to strip back those wires and uh, connect a couple of the cables like so. Uh, once you've got them connected, you can use a bit of heat on those uh, the plastic bit at the bottom of the connection just to really uh, melt that onto the cable and make it nice and tight and waterproof. So now the positive and negative cables of the battery can connect to the controller. So now we're left with a bunch of other cables and we don't need them all, so let's see which ones we can get rid of. Uh, number 7 was the first one to go. I didn't want to have a pedal assist sensor on this e-bike so that uh, cable could get cut off. Uh, number one, LED light, that was an additional cable we didn't need, so that one got cut as well. We only need one of the brake lever cutoff switch sensor cables, so one of those number 11s can get cut off, and we attach the brake uh, cutoff sensor switch to the remaining uh, number 11. So that's three cables you, you can cut and uh, get rid of to reduce the amount of uh, cables you have to manage. Okay, I'll quickly show you how I connect uh, cables because you're probably going to want to shorten some of your cables throughout this project. Uh, so if you go to an electronics shop, you can probably get some of these melt-on uh, cable uh, connectors or wire connectors. And as you can see, if you uh, once you've connected your uh, wire, you can slide over these melt-on connectors and just using a flame or a um, uh, some sort of a heat, uh, you can melt the uh, the connection and it's actually got a little piece of solder in the middle of the connector that really binds those wires together and once you finish you can just wrap them up with uh, some electrical tape uh, and you can shorten your cables by uh, quite a lot. Uh, so here's another example of some cables that I've connected uh, coming from the rear uh, wheel uh, to back to the connection box. So for my build, apart from the brake cables, the only other cable I've got for the e-bike kit is the one coming from the throttle. Uh, so what I've done just to shorten up that, rather than cut that cable, I've just uh, 
done a lap of the battery so i've just uh wrapped that around the battery uh two times and that's uh, just had enough cable to uh, arrive at the control box perfectly uh, i've just used some cable ties just to attach that to the frame to stop it flapping around and now i've got all my other cables connected uh, and they're nice and short so i don't have uh, much uh, flap in the cable uh, and the last uh, cables to be connected are these two blue ones. Now, if uh, your street legal code is to only have a 250 watt uh, motor, you can connect those two blue uh, cables there, and that will restrict your uh, motor to just 250 watts and make it street legal. Uh, that's up to you, if, uh, depending on where you want to ride your bike. Uh, once I've uh, got all those cables connected, I just use some black electrical tape uh, just to wrap it around those, ta um, those cables. Uh, it's, it's a bit ugly, um, but it just keeps them all waterproof and keeps them out of the way and saves me having to put an extra control box uh, cable case on there. Uh, and that was about as least bulky uh, a solution as I could come up with uh, to wrap up those cables. So there we have it. Uh, that's the end of the e-bike project. It's all ready to go. Let's take it for a test ride. Okay, so let's do a test ride. Uh, I'm just using an app on my phone to uh, get the speedo out of the way, Dopey. Okay, so we're going up a hill here. It's, uh, it's like a 15 degree incline, I, I suspect. Um, so uh, it's still plenty of grunt uphill and got up to about 36 k's at hill, or 38 k an hour uh, going uphill. Okay, so not too bad going uphill. We'll just come down this little connection street and then we'll go back downhill on the same sort of a, I think it's about 15, 10 or 15 degree uh, slope going downhill this time. So full throttle. Okay, so getting up to about 45 k's an hour coming downhill. And I've just eased off there at the end. So thanks for sticking with us right till the end. I hope some of the tips and tricks I've taught you help you put your own e-bikes together. If you've got any questions, please enter them in the comments section below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thanks very much. Like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.